So let me preface something before we get into the episode. There's going to be a lot of you upset with me in this episode because some of you are going to go talk to your parents, to your friends, to your counseling, to your teacher. Why did you make me go get this degree? And some parents are going to watch this video. You're going to send this to your kids that say, why did you major in this and waste mommy and daddy's money? Because the underemployed people that are watching this, you're not going to be very happy. You want some numbers here? Check this out. According to researchers at labor analytics firm Burning Glass Institute and nonprofit Strata Education Foundation, they tracked the career paths of 10 million individuals, analyzing the resumes of workers who graduated between 2012 and 2021. Within one year, 52% of them after graduating are underemployed. Within five Five years, 45%. Within 10 years, 45%. And if you're wondering what is the definition of underemployment, according to Federal Reserve Bank of New York, it means working in a job that typically does not require a bachelor's degree. So you spend $200,000, $100,000 of your parents' money, maybe your own money. Maybe you got Sally Mays right now that you're dealing with making those payments and you have a job right now that has nothing to do with your degree. And guess what? We're going to give you some data today. You know what that data is? We're going to give you what data has the lowest unemployment rate in America today and a bunch of other things. It definitely makes you question today's educational system because we were promised you go get this job, guaranteed pay benefits, da 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 da. Let me go get a college degree but that promise is no longer as accurate as it once used to be today we're going to talk about that in this episode If you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But let's get right into it. Parents, if your kids are not yet going to college, pay attention to this. Kids, if you're watching this, maybe you're 16, 17 years old, pay very close attention. Watch what it says here when it comes down to major choice. Many 18 to 22 year olds base their major choices on personal interest rather on labor market demand and supply gaps. What does that mean? Pursue your passion and everything's going to be perfect. Oh my God, I love art. I'm going to go work at a museum and I'm going to work as art person at this museum making $32,000 a year, but I'm going to love it. But I live in New York and oh my God, my rent is $4,200. Mom, how am I supposed to pay this rent? You chose fine arts as a major. Nobody told you to do so. And by the way, since we're talking about fine arts, let's go to the community of fine arts, the wonderful human beings in America that go and spend $200,000 getting a fine arts degree. I have a couple friends in this industry. I'm sure I'm gonna get some uh, nasty DMs and texts, but let's get into it. Here we go. Unemployment rate of recent college graduates in the US as of February, 2023, by major. What do you think is all the way at the top? Fine arts got a big lead with 12.1% unemployment. Then it's philosophy. <laughs> I love philosophy, but not as a degree. Then you have sociology. Then you got family and consumer sciences. Then you got mass media. Then commercial art and graphic design, foreign language, performing arts, public policy and law, international affairs. Then you got engineer technology, political science. By the way, every one of these, the unemployment rate is higher than what the unemployment is right now in America. And by the way, we can keep going. The overall number, like the over under at 5.1% is what the average numbers for unemployment, right? So if you go above 5.1, all those majors, the unemployment is above average of the rest of the numbers. Now, what's below it? Okay, here's what you'll find. Business management. You'll find computer science, pharmacy, biology, advertising and public relations, criminal justice, geography, finance, chemical engineering, computer engineering, even theology and religion pays more. So think about it. The, I, I don't know why theology and religion pays more, but it does. Chemistry, accounting, nursing. So now again, remember, this is not like a conversation about, oh, let's laugh at you because you took that degree or not. I'm not trying to do that. All I'm saying is if you've done it already, it is what it is. Okay, you've already made the decision. You got to move forward. This is for some other people to create awareness. But watch this. If we're going to think logically, right? okay, I want to think a little bit logically about my career path. And then later on, when I make my money, I want to invest into my passion. Okay, no problem. If you can do both, you're part of the lucky few. But watch this. These are the jobs with bachelor's degrees that have the most job openings today. Number one, general and operations manager. Number two, RNs. Okay, number three, software developers. Four, project management specialists. Then it's accountants and auditors. Then it's elementary school teachers. Doesn't pay that well, but there's a lot of openings. Then it's management analysts. Then it's market research analysts. Then it's personal service 
service managers. Pays the most, by the way, $110,000 a year. Secondary school teachers. So obviously a lot of this stuff that we read about, the average parent is gonna sit there and say, let me actually see why I'm putting money into this degree. Is it even worth it or not? And kids are smarter today than before. They're looking at college. I'm talking to my son. One of my sons says, dad, I'm not gonna go to college. I said, why not? And the other one says, I think I'm gonna take a break for one year and work within a company. Then I'm gonna decide what degree I wanna get. Now, of course they can change right now, but this is their decision because my other kid wants to go to college. No problem, right? But they themselves are talking to their peers and seeing what decision they wanna make. Watch this. According to Gallup, confidence in higher education among Americans dropped sharply from 57% in 2015 to 36%. From 57 to 36. Americans do not trust higher education today. So it's wild while we're looking at all this stuff with college degrees. Then a report comes out, Pew, again, talking about who is most threatened by AI. People with more degrees or people with fewer degrees? And watch what it says. If you look at the chart right here, it says what shares of workers are most exposed to AI in their jobs? Less than high school diploma, 3%. High school grad, 12%. Some college, 19 Bachelors, 27% of people with a bachelor's degree, their job can be replaced by AI. So what is what is the point of this? How should I strategize? If there's ever been an era for you to really think about what job you're going to be taking that's going to be around 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, or a degree that's going to give you the right skill sets for that. This is the time to question it the most. So the one topic most people don't want to talk about is trade. Should I go pick up a new trade? When you look at trade skill shortage, the construction industry faces a gap of 500,000 workers. Why? Because a lot of these older workers are starting to retire and there's not a lot of people that want these jobs, right? So according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, the construction industry is projected to add 700,000 new jobs just between 2018 and 2028, but the shortage threatens this growth. The application rate for technical jobs like plumbers and electrician dropped by 49% just in two years from 2020 to 2022. And according to Anthony Carnival, director of Georgetown University Center of Education and the Workforce, America de-industrialized in the second half of 20th century and education was reimagined to emphasize seeking four-year degrees. And by the way, when you look at this data, people think, well, there's no way there's money in that. 30 million jobs in America today pay $55,000 a year that don't require a four-year degree. But what's the point? To your, am I encouraging you to not get a degree? I got four kids. Kind of a message is that if the kid wants to go into STEM and you're going to do something that's a specialized job, that there's a long lifespan for you to do that job, yes, let's entertain it and talk about it. But these types of conversations must be had with the kids because I love what Tom said. Tom said, look, if you want to do this job, I'm not paying for the degree there. You want to do this degree, I'll pay for that. And that's a conversation that parents can have with their kids. You want to get this degree, I'm willing to fund it for you. You want to get this degree, I'm just not going to give you that much money. So what if you, as a parent who's paying the money, if you're getting a full ride scholarship, great. They have the choice to pick and choose. But if you're going to agree to finance money yourself, you can say, I'll pay 100% for this. I'll pay 50% for this. I'll pay 25% for this. I'll pay zero for this. You pick and choose which one you want to go because my job is to invest into you that's going to give you a better rate of return later on in your life, not invest into you to go four years and look at art and say how awesome it is. And four years later, after you're done with college, spending $200,000, living off of $32,000 and saying, Daddy, I don't have enough money. Can you send me $2,000 a month? And you say, what the hell was this all about? What a waste of investment. Parents also have to think about having money to retire on so they don't have to come to their kids are saying, honey, you need to support mommy and daddy. You don't want that either. So there's a predicament going on that this decision needs to be made. Look at your career in the following way. What if you handle marriage the way you handle career many times? What if we're like, oh, I love him. I'm so passionate about him. I'm so passionate about her. But you know, for a fact, this marriage is not going to work out. Should you get married? Well, what are you saying? Should I just marry for money? No, magic first. But then you also got to ask the questions because marriage is more than just, oh, I love her. You got kids, diapers, costs, expenses, in-laws, will it work? How's it going to be struck? There's a lot of things to marriage outside of just I love her. Just like there's a lot of things about the degree and the career path you take just from I'm so passionate about this thing here and that's what I'm going to be doing. So think more about it. I know it's tough for the younger generation, but that would be my biggest challenge to you. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have not seen that video that we did on what industries AI is going to be replacing, click here to watch that video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.